Okay. So as I said, so excited for everyone to be here. Um, what I would love for all of you to do as you are going, as we are talking, if you are resonating with anything, you know, pop in the chat what you're resonating with. If you are having any questions, pop them in the chat. I'll take a look at it. Megan will take it a look at it. Um, at the end, at the end, we will leave some time for a little bit of Q&A if anyone has any specific questions. Melanie, we just got a message that the chat seems to be disabled. Oh, me again. <laughs> um, hmm. Hmm. So I'm going to work on that after <laughs> right. while we are having our conversation to figure out how to do that and may involve some Google. <laughs> so let me open this up um, so we can get started because I know time is everyone's best friend and worst enemy at the same time. So as I'm sure you've been seeing about lots of posts that have been going around to bring you into this um, conversation is this is something that has been coming up a lot within my work, within Megan's work. And it, to, to the point that I actually DM'd her on Instagram being like, Hey, can I ask you a question? Um, are your clients um, talking about age and reaching the age of 40 and kind of feeling like there's a little bit of incongruency of what they're doing and what's going on in their head? So this is something that's kind of been mulling for, for a while. And it's something that I know has come up continuously in lots and lots of conversations um, through my world with female attorneys and also just women in general that work in male dominated fields. So for those of you that don't know me, I am Melanie Lippman. I am an image coach and I work with 90% of my clients are female attorneys. The other 10% work in male dominated fields. And I just help them shed a lot of the limiting beliefs that have to do with weight, age, how they should show up, that has to do with clothing and start dressing in a way that makes them feel confident, um, makes it easy for them to get dressed without needing to lose any weight and not needing to change anything about themselves. So, um, so happy to have Megan here. I'd love for you to share who you are, tell a little bit about your story um, and what got you to where you are today. Cause I find that super, super fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Megan Smiley. I'm a life and business coach now, but it's been a journey to get here. I am a former practicing attorney. Um, I talked to so many lawyers. I went to law school because I didn't have a better idea. It was not a particularly well thought out plan. Um, and so I got caught up in OCI. All my lawyers will know what that is. Um, you know, I didn't think I wanted to work in a big law firm, but I ended up, you know, doing securities law at a firm in Boston. And to really not my surprise, I didn't enjoy it. Um, <laughs> you know, and there were multiple layers. I didn't like the lifestyle. I didn't like the culture. Um, and when I thought about what my next steps would be, I I was honest with myself that I think for some people, the practice of law is is really the issue is the environment. For me, it was also I just didn't like practicing law. Um, so I started to think, okay, well, what else would I do? And I'd only been at that point practicing for four years and I was still, you know, fairly young. <laughs> um, and when I was thinking about what my other options would be, they all had to make sense as a step away from law to me. Cause I, in my mind, like that was the only thing that was available. So, um, I started looking at sort of JD required jobs and, pulled together some of my interests and uh, I ended up sort of finding my dream job of working as the director of international programs at a law school in New York. And that was amazing for a while. I was like, this is it. I've, I've, you know, cracked the code. I've figured it out. This is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. Um, Cause it was fun. I got to work with people from around the world. It was new. I was learning things, but after maybe four or five years, it started to become very um, rote. Uh, I wasn't really, we were doing the same programs year after year. And uh, I was starting to push 40 at that point. And I really was asking myself, is this, is this it? Is this my life for the rest of my working life? I just get up, I come here, I do the same thing, 
each day, each month, each year. And it just felt like I was kind of on a merry-go-round that was not getting me anywhere. Um, and it was tricky because I had left the practice of law because it was so stressful and you were working and you had no like free time. And I was here in this job where I had lots of free time. It was genuinely a nine to five. And, you know, anytime I worked after, you know, after hours, it was like to take interesting people to dinner. It just wasn't, it wasn't hard. Um, but somewhere along the way, I had misidentified what was sort of true for me, which is that it's not that I'm not ambitious. It's just that I didn't care to be ambitious in the legal field. And so uh, this was a way bigger existential crisis for me than even leaving practice was. Um, and I started looking for other jobs because I was like, I need a change. <laughs> and at some point I applied for a job doing events at a law firm because I had sort of been doing events at the law school. And I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> completely lost the plot. This has nothing like this is just going backwards at this point. But it was because every job I looked at made me like stomach cramp. I just was like, they, they all, they're all terrible. I don't want any of these jobs. And that was a really hard place to be in because as lawyers were so linear and analytical. And I was like, I want to make a move that makes sense, but nothing that made sense felt like it resonated with me at all. And that was the point where I really went back to the drawing board and I was like, okay, I'm going to allow myself just to explore. And so I, you know, took a photography class. I started a travel blog. I did voiceover. I took a, a graphic design class. I started a podcast that I am now still hosting. Um, I, and I just was doing all these things to try and tap into what I actually enjoyed doing. Um, one of the things I did was we had bought our place in, in Brooklyn. I renovated the kitchen and I loved that. So somehow I gave myself permission to de declare that I was becoming an interior designer, um, which was wild. Like who am a lot of who am I to do this came up for me because I didn't have any background in it and it had nothing to do with anything I'd ever done. I just enjoyed it and I was moderately good at it, I guess. Um, but I did, I started a company, I got some clients um, and it was that was gonna be my plan. Um, however, the pandemic hit and lots of things sort of shifted including that I think once you get into this entrepreneurial world, I suspect you've seen this too, Melanie, that, you know, you learn so much stuff about yourself. You, there's like no way to avoid the personal growth and development that comes with entrepreneurship. Um, so in that process, I learned a lot about myself and what would sort of be a good fit. And, um, you know, meanwhile, I'd been doing my podcast for lawyers and that sort of all of a sudden was like, I'm kind of coaching lawyers on, on their next steps. And so that has now devol evolved into a coaching business, which feels so aligned with my strengths, my interests, and my values. Um, and I think if I could highlight that those are like sort of the three categories of things I would really, you know, suggest that people think about what is true for you when you're trying to figure out, because I know a lot of lawyers out there would be like, if I knew what my passion was, I would just go do it. Right. And, but it's like, who has the time? And I've killed all those parts of my brains that were creative. And, and it's like really going deep on, you know, what are your interests? If you eliminate the shoulds about, you know, what makes sense, what are your values? You know, for me, I really identified freedom as a top value for me, growth as a top value for me. Um, and, and your strengths, you know, we think as lawyers that our strengths are the skills that we've learned in our career. And while those are very valuable, they may or may not be your natural strengths. You know, for example, I, I considered attention to detail a strength of mine because I would show up and you, you deliver, right? Well, I took the strengths finder test and like pff, bottom of the list, <laughs> like I'm actually terrible at it. And the thing is, I'm not terrible at it. It's just energy draining for me. So there's this whole sort of process you can go through to really connect with what's authentic to, to you. Mm -hmm. um, so that has sort of been my process. That's what's led me here to try and, you know, work with people to help them identify and lean into what's authentic for themselves. The thing, I mean, there are so many, as you were saying, <laughs> but one of the things that I feel like is the biggest aha for a lot of my clients is that the need to be perfect 
letting go a little bit of that. And, you know, the, I, I put in all of this hard work and this is how I do it. And this is how I should it to yeah. the flip side of what you actually allowed yourself to do, which is come from a place of curiosity and yes. with clothes, that is the number one thing that I see with my clients that sometimes I'll have to almost like giggle and be like, you're an attorney or you're like so analytical or the need to be perfect. Like I need to almost be like, you're allowed to put something on and it's not going to be a hundred percent amazing the whole entire time. Like I'm sure it's something that I share with my clients. I'm sure that you probably have heard some version of the study of you give um, two groups of people, two different jobs. The uh, one of them is you need to make the perfect mug. The second one is you need to make as many mugs as humanly possible in three hours or whatever the time span is. Mm -hmm. And the people that want the perfect mug come up with nothing. And the people that do the, the go on quantity, they have, you know, 40 mugs, some are missing a handle, some are broken. But while in the process of not doing it perfectly, you learn so much. And for me, that is such like the attorney mindset. If I can't do it unless it is 100% perfect. So you're actually stopping the process before you're even starting because there's the fear of like, what if they see me mess up? What if they see me do it wrong? What if, what if? So yeah. that idea of curiosity just completely gets gone from like, think about it when you're like three and you know, the world is your oyster and I'll make an airplane out of a toilet bowl roll or, you know, paper roll to like, there's no time for that. Like, yeah. and all of that. So, yeah. and this is something that's come up in a conversation that you and I have had. And it's something that comes up in conversations a lot of times with my clients is what do you do on the weekend? What is your hobby? Which ultimately when I go down kind of the rabbit hole with a lot of my clients is, I don't know who I am outside of being an attorney. I don't know who I am when I don't have the accountant hat on. I don't know who I am without the doctor hat on. How do I show up? And then also a little bit deeper when we really go down, because we don't have seven years to, un to unpack all of this, yeah. but who am I being not a professional and hiding behind that armor, hiding behind the lab coat, hiding behind whatever it is that we kind of, and what if they don't like who I really am? Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's this, you know, I speak from, from, you know, going to law school and being in that environment is there is sort of, you by necessity have to learn how to do things a certain way and fall in line and your individual individuality isn't celebrated very much in those situations. Um, and so I think it's very hard to sort of have been doing this your entire professional life. And then all of a sudden ask yourself, you know, who am I without this? Because it is so ingrained in your self of self, self sense of self and how you walk through the world. And so, you know, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, it's not a flip that you can switch to sort of to, to move through this, that, um, you know, particularly when you're coming, you know, as we've been discussing into, into your forties, it's a real challenge to sort of say, you know, this is a scary moment to be like, who am I? Am I too old to even ask myself this question? Am I too old to make any changes? Because I'm so, I've been living, you know, in this frame for so long. I think it's, you know, I just want anyone listening to know, like, I don't think either of us are saying that this is easy, but it is sort of, I think the process that a lot of us are drawn to because there's something about that ident identity that's not feeling resonant anymore. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also what I've, how I've seen it sometimes that comes up, like let's say in clothing aspects of that, um, well, I will put on the work shirt with a pair of jeans and that's what I go and meet my friends for dinner with, yeah. or, um, you know, I wear, can I wear leather? Like, because I feel like that's a little racy and like, who am I to do that? And like, it also like, we, we, again, we keep talking about the law, but it's really all women that work in male dominated fields, just because the, for so long, we've almost learn these defense mechanisms of how do I not look different? How do I not look different? And then there's all of these things that have been mirrored to us that um, 
don't raise your voice. Don't like all, like, don't draw too much attention. Don't be a woman. (laughs) Like, I think I've told you the story that once when I was still at the law firm, I wore something. I, it wasn't wild and crazy, but it was slightly different than like just, you know, a blue suit. It wasn't a navy blue blazer. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this this female partner said to me, oh, that's a very interesting outfit. Like it wasn't even, you know, implied. It was like very much just like get in check, Megan. That's not what we do here. And that was part of my process of like, this is not even a extreme expression of who I am and I just this environment I find very stifling because Mm -hmm. um you are really you know whether it's explicit or implicit this idea that you get in line and and you sort of match the code around you is very strong Mm -hmm. yeah and then it's also I mean there's there's so much to unpack and the crazy thing is is that so you're everyone's probably sitting here and like I am not an attorney in any way shape or form um, I just work with attorneys. My first client, when I started working as an image coach eight years ago, was a female attorney, kind of happened randomly. Um, but I worked in the clothing industry my whole entire life. I sold very expensive jewelry. So like think $20,000 bracelets. My clients were Barneys and Saks and Burdorfs and Harrods. And the, what was the, one of those crazy eye-opening things for me is that as I would move up in the ranks within the corporate world, fewer and fewer women were in those decision-making roles. Fewer and fewer women were supporting each other because it was almost like a, there's only one room for one woman around this table and it's going to be me. So it wasn't like this camaraderie. And the crazy thing is, is that 95% of the decisions that are made about the clothes that we were wearing are made by a man, like, mm. which is insane. Like yeah. there's a reason why your boys are is strangling you and all of those things and so it's not while yes being in in the law does feel like you know this is there's so much growth that needs to be happening for women it's in a lot of industries the fashion industry which is like literally based on majority of women's clothing is also based on that as well so it's um but it's hard in the sense of when you get to have an opinion or when you want to approach things differently and when um, it's so ingrained in the shoulds. Like I know from my clients a lot of times, so the things that I'm very, very open about and talk about a lot is kind of how do you shed that corporate armor? Like the, the things that you, you know, you kind of needed to wear, like Megan, if you wanted to stay in the law, you yeah. were in the hunter green blazer, you know, and you, wanted to, <laughs> like, right. you could have been like, okay, maybe I can go into private practice or maybe yeah. I could go into IP. Like you could have yeah. kept your little door if you wanted to conform a little bit. Yeah. But there's the things that we kind of need to do. So I'm never the person that's like, listen, like <laughs> you go do you and figure it out because that's not really making it work. But what, what I really bring to the table is the idea of how do we operate within this industry and how do you also still be yourself? So, and a lot of it is, you know, we're finding your place, finding your wardrobe. So it's, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be the black blazer, but maybe it's burgundy or maybe it is adding a print because the whole entire thing is that we want to create connection and we don't want to build walls. And the, when we're putting that armor on, we are building those walls. Um, but it's really figuring out the, the right way to do it. And a lot of times when, why coaching needs to be involved in this is because it's not easy. As you said before, it's not like you flip the light switch. Okay. Today I wear the black blazer tomorrow. I'll wear the hot pink one. No, it is. It it is the thing that is an evolution that is, you know, you can get started and you can get excited about it and be like, Ooh, I'm excited to try something new and be curious and all that. But there's, you know, 21 days is where the, it gets hard. Like, should I be doing this? Or should I just go put the black blazer on? Because a third person said something to me and I'm starting to doubt myself about the green blazer yeah. or the idea of, am I allowed to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, I mean, I think that's societally true and I think it's maybe fairly extreme in some legal environments, this, you know, there's twofold. It's like attaching to what's true for you. And then, and then feeling like you can stand in that truth in an environment that, whether that's your clothes or your personality or how you show up sort of in any way, 
it's um, sort of connecting with what is true for you so that you can show up and be like, I don't care if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's true of clothes. That's true of, you know, career moves. You know, I think they are similar in that um, I see a lot of people just holding themselves back from change out of fear for what will people think? And even what will I think about myself? Like, is, is my concept of self a green blazer wearer, a person that leaves this stable job to explore something, you know, more fun or whatever it is. I think it's, um, there's an evolution of, of allowing yourself to step into those, you know, authentic truths for yourself. So talk to me about like the first step. Cause I think that it's probably goes from like the woman that comes to me and is like, like I, I had women that have worked with me that go from like the Navy blazer, the white button down. And then they're like, they come to me the next day. I, 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 I bought not only the dress, that is like kind of feminine looking, but it's rainbow and like all the things. So it feels like the light switch like that. Yeah. So, and I'm never like, no, nah, we need to take the baby steps. But what yeah. are, do you find? So let's say someone, cause a lot of my clients, they may not choose to leave the law, but they yeah. choose to make a change where yeah. maybe it's like this firm, maybe it's a little, you know, maybe it's a little too big for me yeah. or yeah. I've been a litigator for 15 years and it just doesn't feel good for me anymore. Or, you know what, like, I'm not making partner. Like there's a lot of things or I don't, do I even want to make partner because like the <laughs> sort yeah. of, so to kind of talk about like, what are the, the first things that if someone kind of is like, but I don't even know what the thing that's the right thing to be thinking before I go into overwhelm. Cause again, what are, yeah. what are lawyers going to do? Go to Google, go to a Facebook group. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I don't, yeah, exactly. Like I always joke with Sarah Cottrell, who is also a podcast host that like lawyers will Google like alternative JD jobs, like just spit out the answer for me, please. But of course, that's the sort of approach that got us into a place where we feel stuck, perhaps in the wrong environment in the first place. So um, yeah, I, you know, I think my approach sometimes feels very, um, non-linear <laughs> to people um, because it's not about starting with your your resume and, and looking for jobs. It's about doing the internal exploration that I just mentioned. So um, you know, I always start with what's your what's your vision? Like what does a day in the life look like for you if if you're really like feeling good? What kind of tasks are you doing? What does your schedule look like? Really tapping into sort of the 30,000 foot view of how you want, because work is only one piece of the puzzle, right? This is a life, I really consider it like designing your life. And so it's sort of tapping into that vision. And that can be hard because a lot, a lot of people, but particularly lawyers will go, well, that's not possible. That's not possible. So you don't even set your GPS where you actually want to go. That's what I see a lot of people, you know, they set their GPS for something realistic that is moderately better than what they, they have and they get it but it's only moderately better than what they had and not really their vision. So I think really allowing yourself to go there to imagine what you want um, is the first step. And then it's, it's going inside and say, what are your values? Like for me, like I said, mine are freedom, growth, connection, integrity, and fun. Fun is in my top five. Like if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Um, you know, and allowing myself to say that's my, that's a value of mine. Right. Like, um, and I think it's a strength of mine. Like I show, you know, even when I was at the law firm, they're like, you know, you're always like the sort of morale, you know, person. And, you know, cause I'm like, well, if I'm here, I may as well make it fun. Right. You know, um, and then diving into your interests, those, you know, without judging them and without cutting things off, Cause you don't have to quit your job to, to explore, you know, just going out and take a class in photography, take a class in creative writing. I don't know, whatever it is, you know, or a class in a, a different area of law, if that's kind of where, what you're feeling drawn to, but just allowing it to be imperfect and just be an exploration project rather than, um, I need the answer and it needs to make a hundred percent sense right off the bat. Um, so that's where I would, that's sort of where I would start having people really explore what is, you know, when they look internally, what resonates for them. Mm -hmm. Which is so interesting because 
I know a few women on here that, that work with me, but like my process is super similar in the sense yeah. of with getting dressed, we always have the shoulds and kind of feeling limited by your closet or being limited by your circumstance or being limited by your weight and all of those things. And what I tell my clients to do is to, we're taking all that off. We're taking, you know, the brakes off because, you know, it's the, you know, I, I use a lot of car analogies, like put on the gas, put on the brake situation. But if we took all of that off and then we think about who we are as the person that achieves like the crazy goal, like I'm not talking about like, I want to like make partner or, oh, and not saying that making partner isn't a big deal. It's a really big freaking right. deal making partner, but like, what's the big audacious goal that like, you may not even verbalize to like your partner. Like, is it like, I want to help a hundred women, um, and start my own firm. I don't know, whatever it is. Like ever, right. like I, like my big audacious goal, I'll share it with you is like, yes, I, I love serving my community and I love the women that I'm working with, but my ultimate goal is to do all of this work so I can start a charity to help women when they are 13 years old or in how to get dressed with confidence. Like this, that's like my big ultimate why, because we're all screwed up from that age. Like, unfortunately, like, yeah. so, yeah. but like, but when you dig deep and it's like, what is that? Like, again, 30,000 view goal. And how does she dress? Cause she is yes. not holding on to like that old stingy suit that makes her feel like crap. She is right. not holding on to those bridesmaids dresses. She doesn't have time for any of that. And it's yeah. the same thing. Like what, what is that? Like, where does that person go on vacation? Like, you know, like what, like, how is she spending her time? And it, what's the, the hardest thing is I'm sure that you've, heard, that you've heard about this. There's this whole a lot of this, you know, masculine versus feminine energy. But when you really step into the femininity, a lot of it is the parts of it have been taken away because it's that playfulness. It's the, who could I be? What is possible? And yeah. really kind of being like playing a little It's more of a flow, up. right? It's right. like more of a flow. flow rather than on a like strict path. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And even like I was chatting with a client yesterday and she said to me, one of the things I'm super excited about doing is going into store and just trying some stuff on with not buying anything. Yeah. Because like, for like, yes, like we all, you know, our time is worth a lot in all aspects, but the going in with not having a true intention actually is you gain a lot more from not saying I need this to accomplish this in this amount of time. And if it's not doing it, I'm not doing that because you're putting so much outside pressure on it. Yeah. That's what I sort of engaged in, in my like exploratory phase that I call it. Like I you were know. like, had a backpack. I just was literally like, like all the things I'm going to do all the, th like, why did I take a voiceover class? Like, because some dude on the street was like, Oh, do you do voiceover? I'm like, no, my voice is so annoying. Why would I do that? But then I had it in my head. I'm like, maybe this is like some super like easy career that I'm like sleeping on. <laughs> but, and I was starting the podcast at that point. So it's sort of like played in, but like, is that what I do? No. Was it a fun class that I took for a few weeks? Yeah. You know? And it's like, it's okay if it doesn't it doesn't have to immediately lead to something for it to hold value for your own development. Mm -hmm. And you also don't know what those things are. I'm sure this is true of clothing as well, is that, um, you know, I started my podcast um, three years ago, interviewing lawyers who've left practice to do other things just because I like- You jet. wanted someone well, to inspire you. Yeah, exactly. Literally, I was like, this is a good way to get people to talk to me about their, you know, what- I'm yeah, not going to have a curious conversation and get on a 15 minute yeah. phone call. I'm going to have- Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, I have a podcast. Please be on it. Can I ask you some questions? You know, that was, that was honestly why. Also, because I had a job that a lot of people asked me about because, you know, it was kind of a cool legal adjacent job. Um, I- pure, pure hobby like that. I just did it because I thought I would enjoy it. And I didn't think it was going to really be anything. Three years later, it's been like the core of what my entire sort of business has, has developed into, but you have to try on a few things to see what suits you. Right. Like, and, um, it, and I think there's this perfectionistic streak in a lot of people, particularly lawyers, because there really is, we are trained that there's no room for mistakes. Like if, if you miss like that 
you know, well, back in my day, it was like, if you didn't have two spaces after a period, of course, now I'm like, you know, are we one space? Are we two space? But that level of like, yeah, like the the world is going to die if you don't have like exactly the right punctuation. And this, this sort of anxiety that we all have about making any mistake is just absolutely paralyzing. Right. And it's sort of getting out of that mentality and saying, look, I'm going to try on this dress. I don't know if it will work. I'm going to take this class in photography. I don't know if I'll like it. I don't know if I'll be good at it. Like, it's okay if you're not, it's okay if not everything suits you, but that's the process of finding the things that do. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting that you say that because I actually find when I start having conversations with a lot of women that I work with about um, either what's holding them back from, from letting go of something or, you know, have you tried this? They'll actually end up with a mediocre thing because they know how to do it. So let's say like they're going to wear, I'm making it up, skinny jeans because they know what shoes to wear with it. Right. As opposed right. to like, it's like if, if we'll be go and be like, hey, those aren't the right things for you. But then they're like, but I have 7,000 questions about how to wear the other thing that I know is better for me, but I don't know if I'm going to do that one right. So yeah. you're all like, you're like blocking yourself from the possibility. Because it, right, right. Because you're, you don't have the marching letters. Right. And I think the way you become a lawyer is you go to law school, you follow the path. There's like, you know, it, it's just very, like, there are a lot of, you know what the steps are and it's not that it's easy, but you kind of, there's a clarity to knowing the process and there's some comfort in that. And I think when you all of a sudden you're like, wait, everything is my option. That is scary, overwhelming. You feel unmoored even trying to explore just because it's, it's just not how we've been trained to function in the world. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, are, when you're working with clients, do you bring some sort of strategy in there to comfort them? Or is it com- a complete like exploration? Um, yeah, you know, each person is different. So I work with people one-on-one. So it's very much like, where are you and where, you know, setting a goal of what you want. Now, maybe that's, you know, a, a different job within the the legal field. Although I primarily work with people who, they're actually feeling some, themselves called to some a bigger change. And that's where the, you know, the gas is like, that sounds cool. That sounds fun. And then the brakes are, but that's, that's not realistic. That's, mm. and there's a lot of sort of internal work to be done um, to, I always say, you kind of have to clear away the blocks to get to a point of neutrality to say, this is something I want to do. This is something I don't want to do because from this if you don't do that, you're in this space of anxiety and rules and you're making all of your decisions from that place. So I like to help people remove those blocks and then attach to like what is true for them because it's easier to then, you know, go down a road that you might've a month ago told yourself was absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, one thing I love to do with people is look for evidence of the possible because as lawyers, we're all problem, you know, seekers. That's what we're trained to do, issue spot. Um, and so, you know, someone can tell you the 20 different risks and p- probable negative outcomes of doing X, Y, or Z. But what are what are the positive possibilities? You know, are there people out there doing the thing that you want to do? Like, look for evidence of the possible rather than mm-hmm. our inclination, which is let's look for all the things that we should worry about. <laughs> I know it's, it's so interesting because um, my husband's a liability insurance broker. So uh, people yes. always are like, how do you know how our brains work so much? I'm like, cause I'm yeah. basically married. Like literally my husband yes. walks into a situation. He's like, risk, 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 risk. <laughs> like, so right. I know what kind of, what, how the brain works and yes. A very similar thing is like, okay, okay, let's talk about a situation when you actually have tried, went to a store and enjoyed the experience and tried something on that you liked because, yeah. and we're so critical, like when it comes to our bodies and yeah. when it comes to, it's like, mm, 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 mm. like we go get pictures of ourselves. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. And we get, yeah. to, we can get so hung up on that where yeah. when we can look for places that, um, we've had success before you kind of can bring that into it. And it's kind of like a a neuro coaching um, tool as well. Another thing that I also find that with my clients, and I'm sure this kind of comes up a lot with you 
is because of the analytical brain, there's like that information overload of like, okay, so now we're going to look at all, look at that. And then all of a sudden, yeah, they're taking five courses of, yes, yeah, <laughs> there's definitely, um, it's funny that you say that because, uh, also lawyers are learners, right? So the research and learning phase is very, um, it relatively comfortable for lawyers. It's like, okay, I'll gather information. I'll learn things. Um, but you know, we'd been talking about when do you, when do you know that you're kind of ready for coaching? And for my people, if, if you've been researching jobs, researching, you know, things for months into years, you know, you, you may probably have been caught in this research loop, which is a, which is totally understandable. And I mean, who hasn't bought like 7,000 different coaching situations? Right. Exactly. Like, I mean, like we probably (laughs) could start like an encyclopedia of the universe. Right. Exactly. Like totally guilty of it myself, which is how I can recognize it. So, so clearly as well, um, because it's the action that, that that's really where the rubber meets the road and that's where it gets scary. And, and if you're not getting into action, you know, you can spin for a very long time and not make progress. And then that it fuels your kind of frustration that you're like, well, now I'm a year older and now I really, you know, I haven't and, really... I, and I invested all this time, but I didn't right. do anything. So exactly. Like, exactly. So. And so I'm, I'm, I believe there's a time for research and exploration and there's a time to get into action and learn from action and allow allow the evolution to happen. Like, like I said, like I thought moving to the job at the law school was like it. Right. And what I heard people to do is like, remove the pressure that anything has to be it. Like you're a person who's evolving there, you know, you can make a move and then make another move. Like that is not failure. That is growth. It's like, it's so about the progress. Like for some reason we are all sold this idea when X, Y, and Z happens. And I think that, that, you know, we we keep talking about age and it's kind of like that when you either get to 40 or you're on that partner track, like you just think you're going to arrive and all of a sudden things are going to get easy and they're going to start throwing you stuff and you're going to get the good cases and you're going to have like, um, you know, the budget to go buy the fabulous wardrobe. So you can go and shop at Saks instead of TJ Maxx. Like you we're all sold like this, like when you get there, the golden gates will open. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. You know, and it's, it's interesting you say that. Cause I think I may have mentioned that when I started doing this coaching, you sort of expect people to be somewhere on, on like your path. So I'm like, I got out of practice in like four years. So I sort of expected my the people that would be coming to me to be people sort of, you know, early mid, mid associates. Um, and this makes sense, but I was somehow surprised that that's not, that's not who's looking for this kind of support. I get mostly people in their forties, partners of counsel, people who have made a couple of moves in their career already. People Mm -hmm. who have sort of gotten to those places where they thought they had arrived to find that the thought of doing that for the next 25, 30 years feels very, very heavy. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think it's, but then you're in your forties going, what am I going to do a whole other career? But then my, my, (laughs) yeah. You know, there's, there's always a a discomfort. There's a discomfort in change. Mm -hmm. There's a discomfort in being stagnant. If you Mm -hmm. feel, if you love what you do, then. Right. Exactly. Then you're going to find joy in other things. Yeah, exactly. Like, and and there are a lot of people who love practicing law. I know a lot of people who love practicing law. And for those people, it may be about tweaking, you know, the practice area or the environment. But I think, you know, a lot of people I come to me are coming to me because they're like, Mm -hmm. I'm ready for another chapter, but I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I find that a lot of the, the women that come to me are, have had many failed attempts of like Mm -hmm. probably collecting a lot of information of reading blogs, looking at, you know, social media, looking at, you know, the, the lawyer blog of what I should wear to work and just feeling that complete disconnect or may have like this huge Pinterest board of all these outfits that you like, but you don't even know where to get started. And then you go and look in your closet and you're like, yeah, you know, this doesn't feel like me. So it's really for what I find is 
how do we get out of the analysis paralysis and go into implementation? Yeah. Because it's not as hard as we all make it, as, as it feels. Because it's yeah. like, what's the one thing that we can do today to get us towards that huge audacious goal that yeah. actually makes us feel excited? Because that's where it is. It's about that progress and all of that. Yeah, yeah. So I would love... I know that the chat, I, I'm sorry, guys, I'm fired for my tea again. Um, <laughs> not, not, not doing that as a career move, um, but I would love, um, I'm going to pop my LinkedIn handle in the chat because I believe that you guys can chat to, to, that you can get my, my that. And if Megan can do that, and if you would just like to take with either one of us, like the first step, which is just kind of saying like, I am going to close my eyes and just like either picture what like hobby would light me up and like what kind of feel, you know, dreaming a little bit about what would be something that feels a little out of the box, but not too stretchy for you. So you could share that with Megan. And then with me, if you're like closing your eyes and you're like, you know, there's this thing I would wear and it would just make me feel amazing like that. Like, or the thing I would let go of and uh, like the idea or the concept. So again, all of this is just progress, not perfection. And the first step really is um, just thinking about it and getting like a little bit curious in there. So there's both of our um, contact in, you know, LinkedIn situations there. So connect with us, drop us a quick message. It doesn't we will not judge you on your punctuation. We will not judge you on your grammar. We will not count the number of spaces between the period and the next sentence. Me also, if you follow me on LinkedIn, grammar, red pen me all day long, but I'll turn around and say what's going on in your closet. Like, <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, speaking of imperfection, like, we, you know, we talked about doing this for a couple of weeks and then we sent it all, settled on this week. Uh, I'm in my family's house in Montana. I'm like, um, uh, a, a denim jumpsuit is the fanciest thing. <laughs> so I'm going to share something with you. So by the way, that I, I, I'm trying, this is how cool I, I'm yeah. pretending to be. Um, so my son has been homesick for five days. Yeah. Um, he's not positive for COVID, even though he's been tested 9,000 times. Yeah. So I literally just got dressed for this fall. I'm wearing two different earrings. Oh my gosh. I didn't even notice. <laughs> See, that's you notice, like three minutes day. in. And I'm oh like, do God, I change? I love that. I love that. Just own it. That was on purpose. <laughs> they have the same colors, though. Yeah, they, I mean, I was yeah, wanted to start putting one on, and I was like, oh, I like this one. That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> so don't be <laughs> exactly perfection. I have earrings on. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We're we're living the truth of uh, you know showing up in. <laughs> whatever feels easy. <laughs> exactly. So share with us as everyone is kind of either connecting or sharing like what the one thing that feels like a little bit scary. Um, Megan, can you share with us um, if anyone is like thinking that they're curious about this? Because again, I know Megan and she's not going to be like, so you're ready to make the move tomorrow. If yeah. someone is just, this is just like scratching something in their head right now, what do they do? Yeah. Well, one of the first easiest, lowest sort of bar things is to check out my podcast, The Lawyer's Escape Pod, where I interview people who've gone on to do sort of many other things. Um, you know, I think one of the, that's sort of in the category of looking for evidence of the possible, just to open your mind. Um, but you can also check out just my website, megansmiley.com, sort of talks about what I do. I also have um, a book called... Uh, Look at you, you're an author. You didn't share that. Well, it's a, just a chapter in a book. Um, and it's so funny. Lawyers, I find a lot of lawyers are like, I love writing. I'm like, I hate writing. That's why I have a podcast. But anyway, it's this book about um, strategies for building a soul aligned business. So it also tells sort of my story and other people's stories about how you do find that sort of alignment and resonance in what you do. Um, and I've got a private podcast. If you have any interest in sort of like exploring what it looks like to start a business, um, there's a link to the uh, Daydreams to Designs private podcast on my website. So lot, and if you want to schedule a call, um, happy to do that as well. All of that's on the website. But 
lots of different sort of steps for depending on where someone is in the process. Awesome. Love that. Yeah. We like options. And the funniest thing is I know about attorneys or just like the women that I work with, they normally have like lots of research and they'll get on the call with me and be like, I heard you on this podcast and this and that and that. And I'm like, I know, know, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Like I had someone reach out to me. Um, Also, I'll put this out to people. Um, I've had people reach out and say, oh, I heard so-and-so on your podcast. Could you connect me? And I'm always happy to, right? Like if I can, um, I will. And someone recently reached out and had enjoyed the very, very first episode of the podcast. And I was like, well, that's just my friend. Cause that was me just like pulling together anyone I knew. Um, but, in the street, but yeah, they like told me I should be a voiceover you coach. Know, and you'd like a connection. I also, one of the thing, you know, connection is one of my top values as well. And so I love to be able to connect with people and also connect other people. If that is of, of service to people. Awesome. I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Whoa. And how about you? How do people get in touch with you? Sure. So I have, I just started um, a few weeks ago, a Facebook group, which is, I'll put the link in here. It's um, show up and be seen. Um, but really uh, what we're doing in there is just having fun, um, shedding your corporate armor and just starting to get dressed. And there is going to be um, in the next few weeks in a really fun challenge, which is just five days of like how to keep it fun, keep it simple of, because getting dressed can be fun and easy, which is there, there's a lot of other stuff that makes it complicated and overwhelming. So that's the goal of that is to just make it fun, make it easy and make it just like something you can do. Like while you're getting dressed each morning, it doesn't have to be this huge overwhelming thing. So that um, if anyone's interested in that, or I do have a group pr- program, which is five weeks to figuring it all out and creating that roadmap of taking you from overwhelm to this is exactly what my style is. This is how I want to show up. This is what looks good on me. This is how to put together outfits. It's what we all should have learned when we were 13 years old, when we were learning all of those bad habits about body image and shop and sale racks and all of those things that have happened to us, we get to make our wardrobe happen for us. So if anyone wants any information about that, happy to share. Um, And does anyone on here have any questions? You could pop it in the Q&A since obviously the the chat thing ain't working here, but we have the (laughs) Q&A in here as well. So, I have a question for you, Megan. What was the first thing that you did when you decided you wanted to start your podcast? Um, 17 hours of research. Uh, you know, I, I, I did a little research to be like, does, you know, it, am I missing that this exists in t- 10 different ways? And, and there was nothing that was quite in, in that. The funny thing is that, uh, I, it's almost exactly three years since I launched it. And I, I, you probably know Sarah Cottrell, who's the host of the former lawyer podcast, which mm-hmm. is another great one to listen to everybody. Um, we launched our podcast within a week of each other um, because we had this sense that there was a demand for lawyers to hear about specifically lawyer stories of career sh- changes. So so um, it turned out there were two podcasts in, in the field right off the bat, but there weren't when I was researching it. I just, you know, the mechanics of it are, it was sort of challenging and um but that part was just knowable. You could Google it. Um, and then it was putting out to my network. And actually that was almost the scariest part was just to put out to everyone. I'm doing this thing. Like, does anybody want to be on my podcast? It's like, who are you to have a podcast? All those thoughts came up. Um, but I, I leaned into like, this is just for fun. I'm just exploring this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and yeah, it just kind of took on a life of its own, but it's been really fun. And um, it was part of what helped me learn that one of the things I was looking for, I like to create, I like to like create something and put it into the world. And mm-hmm. so as I started to think about my next steps, I realized that's going to be an important element for me. So even off the bat, it was like a very useful uh, exploratory stage. I love yeah. that. And I also think that it probably adds to the idea of the connection where it's like, you having a platform for other people. It's not just about you kind of sharing your stories. It's also creating the connection with other people so they can, because I know this better than a lot of people is the visibility within the attorney space or in just that overachieving space is hard for someone to be like, I have a story to listen to. 
But if you're inviting people in, they're happy to share. It's just that like, does anyone even hear this? Yeah. And I think also it's one of these things where a lot of people are feeling unsatisfied or stuck, but somehow that conversation isn't happening because you're in a world where everyone's kind of like, we're what, you know, you're starting to say, is there something wrong with me that I, am I, am I don't like not built for this type of success. And so I hear from a lot of listeners that it's just, even if you don't speak directly to someone, just knowing that there's this community of people working through similar issues can be very validating in and of itself to know Mm -hmm. that you're not alone. I love that. Yeah. And I find that also is that people are like, I'm the only one that it takes 20 minutes to get dressed each day, or I'm the only one, I'm the only one. It's a very like, and it's the thing that you don't want to share because it's you saying like, I'm not good at something like right, right, raising your hands and being like, I need help. And for, you know, for something like you, you're like, I've, I've put in so many years. I put in so many hours. How dare I you know, and there's, you know, with some, there's a lot, also. there's a lot there's of family work. stuff that goes into that as well. It, it, I it's really, it's so up. many layers. And like, when I work with people, people will be surprised. Sometimes it's like, it does go there into being like, all right, where did that story come up for you originally? Because I'm a believer in clearing these blocks at the core. Um, because there's a lot of sort of stories that we are running off of. And if you don't, peel those away and come down to your truth. You're just going to get into the same Mm -hmm. patterns that you were already in. Um, But, and I'm sure that's true of clothing too, right? Like you fall back into a pattern quite easily. Yeah. It's, and especially if it comes to drawing attention to yourself or investing in yourself or um, I literally have had clients that they'll sign up to work with me because they literally threw out their whole entire closet and went and bought the same thing again. Yeah. Like literally like they yeah. went and bought the same wardrobe all over again. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and it's not until you're like, what is going on here? Um, and how do I have a better solution? And a lot of it, like you said, it's not this like, oh, I just need to tuck my shirt in or I need to wear this color. It's something that is deep. And yeah, yeah. But when it comes to overachieving women, it's not like you were all told you, you're awesome. Great job. You got a 95. No, there was right. someone there was that other five hundred. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. and that happens at eight. So yeah. let's be real. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> and that's why I think the kind of, you know, what we're both describing as part of our process is really like, you can Google how to do anything, right? Like, but there's something more transformative that needs to happen for it to stick. And so I'm also not a coach that's like, well, just look, this can be true. Just do it, right? Like, cause that's, if that worked, we would all be doing it, <laughs> right? And also and, just also yeah. the, the thing that I know yeah. as far as coaching, just because it's what worked for me, it may not be work for, what worked for yeah. you. So where a lot of people look for solutions by going to a personal shopper or subscription box, or for you, it could be, oh, I'm just going to read this book or whatever, just because it was someone else's path and it was powerful for them. It's having a coach find you your right path and also being beside you when it gets hard, because what always happens is right before you hit that place of transformation, your brain goes, this is hard. This is scary. Stop. Do not pass. Go. And you go back. And yeah. you need the person that's going to be there for you to tell you what's going to happen, how yeah. you're going to get through it, and yeah. also get you to the other side of it because yeah. Yeah. it is it is messy. Yeah, and just normalize that it's messy. Like none of you, I'm sure this is true for you. It's definitely true for me. Like I didn't just like click a finger and all of a sudden I had this very clear <laughs> you know, plan. It's like no, out I went into out is messy. And it like, doesn't matter that you're 40. It's like there's. There's still so much time to like, if you think of it as just like, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm evolving and that's okay. And it could be messy and that it, there's space for that. It's just, it takes a lot of the pressure over it having off having to be, I think we want to like conceptualize everything to perfection before we execute. And it just doesn't work that Mm-mm. way. <laughs> no, because we yeah. all got stuff. I mean, I think that that's yeah. what that's what these two years have te- taught us is that we need to kind of be a little bit more in flow and stuff's going to happen. We're going to have ups and downs and amazing outfits and amazing outcomes. And then something's going to happen and it's going to push you right back. And it yeah. lets you do the work in your brain 
you're going to get, go back even further. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's so, it's so true. And I think, you know, and that's why, you know, making real change is hard. Like it's, it is. We would yeah. all do it. I mean, right. it's, it's yeah. weight loss. It's all, you know, I know <laughs> it's all, it's all the things. You would pay the money and get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, but that's why going to the core of some of these, these things act, you know, it may help you with your dressing. It may help you with your career. It's also probably going to help you with a lot of different things because mm -hmm. when you sort of deal with that core thing, it transcends the area of life mm -hmm. that you're talking yeah, about. And I'm sure that you hear this from clients all the time yeah. is that when your mind shifts about your career gets better, your relationship with your husband gets better. Like, oh, well, it's kind of like, it, it, it spills it over. I hear from my yes. clients, I, I'm excited to get dressed and then now I feel so much confident at work or, you know what, like now I'm yeah, being, yeah, you know, totally. like, I, I'm a better mom. I'm doing like, it just yeah. it like, ooh, it, it like, r runs over. So yeah, awesome. yeah. So this has been so amazing. I thank you ladies so much for being here. Um, and if any of you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Megan or myself. And thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. This has been so fun, Melanie. I could sit here and chat all day. I, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> we could be here for five hours. So <laughs> want to be mindful. So respect time, time is, a, <laughs> is a value. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Have a great day. Right. Thanks.